Hello, my name is Hila, and I'm going to present the work Generic Attention Model Explainability for Interpreting Bimodal and Encoder Decoder Transformers with Shir Gu and Liu Wu from Tel Aviv University. First, let's describe the problem the paper tries to deal with. We have a transformer based model which we annotate by M. This model is giving one or two input sequences which we annotate by I1 and I2. The goal of the paper is to visualize the tokens from I1 and I2 that determine the output of the model M. To better understand the definition from the previous slide, let's look at an example with a flip model. The flip model takes two inputs. The first one is a textual description, and the second one is an image. In this case, the input image is one of an elephant and a zebra standing by the lake. So given any textual description, our method should be able to output a heat map of the pixels which correspond to that textual description. For example, as you can see here, if the textual description is an elephant, the heat map corresponds to the elephant. If the textual description is a zebra, the heat map corresponds to the zebra. And if the textual description is a lake, the heat map corresponds to the lake. Let's look at another example with DETR, which is a model for object detection. This model gets a single input sequence I1, which is an image. The output of the model is a bounding box and a detection for each object in the image. So given this input image, we have five bounding boxes and five classifications. Two remote, here and here, a couch, and two cats. Given each bounding box and classification, our method should be able to output a heat map of the pixels that correspond to that object. So if you look at the remote here, the heat map corresponds to the remote in the bounding box. If we look at the cat here, the heat map corresponds to the cat in the bounding box. And this heat map corresponds to the couch behind the cat. Now we can move on to describe the method proposed by the paper. First, we'd like to point out that our method is the first to deal with forms of attention other than self-attention, i.e. co-attention. In co-attention, the queries come from the target domain, while the keys and values come from a context domain. As you can see in the figure here for co-attention, the input determines the queries, while the context determines the files and the keys. While for self-attention, the input determines the queries, the keys, and the values. We present in the paper examples with the three most common forms of attention. The first is pure self-attention, which is dealt with by other methods as well. The second is self-attention combined with co-attention. And the third is encoder-decoder attention. Now, let's understand the output provided by our method. As before, we consider a transformer-based model, which we annotate by N. We assume for simplicity that as in CLIP, I1 is a textual sequence, and I2 is an inner sequence. Our method uses the attention map to output a relevance map for each of the relations between the input tokens. Since we have two types of input tokens, we have four types of relations. The first, RTT, defines the relevance of each text token to the other text tokens. RII defines the relevance of each image token to the other image tokens. RTI defines the relevance of each image token to the textual tokens, and RIT defines the relevance of each text token to the other image tokens. Let's understand how the final hit maps are produced using our method. Usually, a classification token is appended to one of the input sequences to determine the final output. Let's assume for simplicity that the classification token is the first token in the text sequence. We need to produce relevance for each text token and each image token in the input. The relevance for each text token can be derived from RTT in the first row. The first row of RTT defines the influence of each input text token on the classification token. The relevance for each image token can be defined by RTI in the first row. The first row of RTI defines the influence of each image token on the classification token. These relevance scores are then used as a scores for the heat maps for both the text and the image sequences. Note that there are two challenges to using the attention maps to produce relevancy maps. 
The first challenge is that each attention layer has several attention heads, so we need to aggregate over the attention heads. The second is that there are several attention layers, so we also need to aggregate over the attention layers to produce the relevancy maps. Let's describe how we solve the first problem of aggregating attention heads. As before, we consider a transformer based model which we annotate by M. Also, we select the target logic T. For example, with CLIP, T is a similarity score between a target text and an input image. Now, we propagate gradients with regards to the target logic T throughout the entire network. Now that we've propagated gradients throughout the network, for each attention head, we have both the gradients and the attention maps. So we can use both to average across the attention heads. We do that by multiplying the gradients and the attention maps element by element, followed by removing the negative contributions as done by previous papers. Then we average across the attention heads to get one relevancy map for each attention layer. Now that we have a single relevance map for each attention layer, we can move on to the second challenge, which is aggregating the attention layers. Our relevance maps are initialized as follows. RTT and RII are initialized to be the unit matrix. This is since before we do any attention, each token only influences itself. RTI and RIT are initialized to be zero matrices, and this is since before we do any co-attention, the text tokens don't influence the image tokens and vice versa. The relevance maps are updated in a forward pass on the attention layers. Recall that each attention layer can be either pure self-attention or co-attention, so we define relevance update rules for each attention layer type. Let's assume for simplicity that the input modality to the attention layer is a text modality. As before, we annotate by A bar the relevance map of the current attention layer, which was obtained using the gradients and the attention map. Now, let's define the rules for the self-attention layer. Rules 6 and 7 in the paper update RTT and RTI. First, we account for the residual connections in the attention mechanism as done by other papers by adding the previous relevance map. Then, we aggregate the current relevance map with the previous relevance map in order to account for connections that were made by the attention mechanism in previous attention layers. Now that we've defined the rules for self-attention, we need to similarly define the rules for co-attention layers. Let's assume for simplicity that the input modality is a text modality and the context modality is the image modality. So the paper defines two rules for co-attention, rule 10 and rule 11. Rule 10 updates RTI and rule 11 updates RTT. As before, we account for the residual connections in the attention mechanism by adding the previous relevance map. Also, we aggregate the current relevance maps with the previous relevance maps in order to account for previous attention layers by matrix multiplication, similarly to what we did for self-attention. Now that we've understood the method, let's look at some quantitative results. It is important to note that for pure self-attention architectures, our method is very similar to the state-of-the-art technique from CVPR 2021. The difference stems mainly from our choice to remove LRP from the equations. We do that since, first, LRP does not contribute significantly to the quantitative results, as we'll show, and two, since LRP adds complexity both in runtime and in implementation. As mentioned, we present quantitative results for each of the three most commonly used transformer architectures, the first being pure self-attention. We use Visual Bird for visual question answering, since this task requires knowledge for both the visual and the textual modalities. We present positive and negative perturbation area under the curve results on the visual question answering validation set. Note that for positive perturbation, a lower area under the curve is better, and for negative perturbation, a higher area under the curve is better. These graphs represent the perturbation test results. The method, which is the current state of the art from CVPR 2021, is marked here as transformer attribution. As you can see, 
transformer attribution and R method are very close across all the tests, and also the other methods fail to compare. This indicates that, as we said before, LRP is unnecessary and can be removed. The second architecture we examine is a co-attention-based architecture. We use the LXWERT model for visual question answering, and again, we present positive and negative perturbation area under the curve test. Know the software detects modality, our method is able to greatly art perform all other methods, including the state of the art. This indicates that our unique rules are crucial in order to be able to deal with forms of attention other than pure self-attention. The third and final architecture we present is an encoder-decoder architecture. We use the DETR model pre-trained for object detection. Then, we treat the hit maps created by the different explainability algorithms as segmentation maps and evaluate those segmentation maps on the semantic segmentation test. As you can see, our method achieves much favorable performance in comparison to all other methods, including the current state of the art, meaning that, again, our novel formulation is necessary to deal with any form of attention other than self-attention. Thank you for listening. Please check out our paper and code and feel free to ask questions.